but let's move right into it. Um, I think we have to start with the biggest, um, the biggest news from the week, which is Alex Mawil is a starter at Nashville, and he's finally getting the. No, I'm just kidding. Armas he cut his, he cut his hair. I know it's so upsetting. <laughs> Uh, Alex, join the podcast, please. <laughs> Armas is out of RBNY. This has been something that's been on the cards for a while. And after our loss against DC, our one nothing loss that we looked absolutely pitiful against, I had a whole big rant set up. I was going to sit here for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, three hours, however long it took just to get my emotions out about how bad we've been playing. And finally put out to the podcast world that I am team Armas out. And then it happened before I could record. So before we go anywhere further, I don't wish anything poor on Chris Armas. I'm in that Red Bull Facebook group. And there are some people who are like, I'm so happy that this dude doesn't have a job. Like they're being awful people. This man is a great human being. Um, he worked in Lindenhurst actually with a, a few of my friends who played on the girls side. Um, he was their, their head coach for a while before he moved to RBNY. So, um, you know, I've only heard great things about him. And even just in press conferences, I've heard he's just a great, great person. Um, however, it was time to go, right? There were, there were some decisions that he made that you just were scratching your head at sometimes, right? I and mean, we go all the way back to 2018 and the Atlanta decision in the playoffs. Your desire to stick to a four triple two that even when Jesse was forced to try it, he was like, screw this, it's not working. I'm going back to my four, two, three, one. I'm gonna press the hell out of everybody, I'm gonna win the ball, I'm gonna win. His also his desire to make changes and turn it into what the 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 social media world called Armas Ball, right? Half the time I'm gonna press the hell out of you, half the time I'm gonna sit back behind my own 30 and say, Come get me. like pick a style and play it. And yeah, it just, it didn't work for him. Um, you know, and then you saw the way that he handled himself in the media um, along the lines, his comment of when I make good decisions, nobody says anything. When I make the bad decisions, everybody starts talking. But that's, that's what you get as a head coach. That is, that's what you sign up for. Um, again, I wish nothing but the best for this man. He is, he's always been good. And you can actually see it as we're going to talk about in a little bit, but the players were physically hurt after that was let go. I mean, you saw people who just, they couldn't get going. They didn't want to play. I mean, you, there was, a, I think it was Shep, of course, saying something like, oh, Sean Davis isn't playing because Chris Armas got fired. Sean Davis has a knee injury. He's out for three weeks. But there was, you know, you could see that in the game, like whenever there was no motivation to keep going, right? It was like, ah, lost the ball, whatever. While granted, that is something that we've seen the last few weeks. It, it wasn't as soon as it was in the Philly game. And we'll talk about the Philly game later. But while Armas needed to go, and I want to make this very, very clear, Chris Armas was not the problem with the New York Rebels. Chris Armas is not the problem. While he needed to go because it shows uh, Philwell's desire to win, right? He has a, a system in mind. He doesn't think Chris is going to fit it, whatever. Chris Armas was not the issue. Red Bull Global's lack of investment in this football club is criminal. And to expect any coach to take that and turn it into a winning team is stupid and wrong. It's just straight up ridiculous. We have the lowest payroll in the league. And Armas had us in the playoffs last year with basically the same team. And he had us fighting at playoff spots this year. Which, while that's not good enough for us, as we know as Red Bull fans, it's not good enough for us. The fact that he was able to do that shows that there's something there that he was able to do. It, it, it's frustrating when people think that it's only the issue, but I think a lot of people are seeing now that it was really Red Bull, not Armas, right? And it, a lot of people were Armas out, Hamlet out, you know, this player out, that player out. At what point does it turn to just Red Bull out? These guys do not want to invest in our team. They don't want to see us do well. All they want to do is take our academy, take all the good players, and sell them on for profit. That's all they care about. And, and granted, like, if that's the way you want to do it, great. But give us something to play for. Otherwise, you're, you're not going to have your fans there. The fans are going to abandon you. You're not going to have players who want to play for you because you're not a good team. Nothing's going to happen until you put something forward. Now we move into the, the idea of Kevin Philwell, right, and, and his idea of this desire to win. And I think that's something that we all should welcome as Red Bull fans, which we do. 
<coughs> excuse me. But every move he's made so far has been something of promise. You got Tete on loan because he saw that for the, what are we, 13, 14 games in, we still don't have a goal from a striker. Clearly, that was a spot we needed to go to. Great. So he brings him in. Drew Yearwood, tons of potential, wasn't getting any time at Brentford. Go in, pick him up, and, and he can play the style. And you saw when he entered the field, he's got to sort his attitude out because he walked on and within 30 seconds, he was already throwing his hands up saying, this is stupid. This team's awful. Why am I playing here? Which is not good. I, he, he, I'm sure he's got tons of potential. He, he seems to press in the right areas and see things very, very well. But, man, if you're not going to play with this team and you're going to just complain, you're not good enough to do that. At least you haven't shown us yet. So get the fans on your side first. Pendant, great signing. I think it was one of his first signings when he came in. Pendant was a great signing. Um, I think he's been really, really good. He's, he came in, he saw Pat Segrist, and again, Pat Segrist, probably a great dude. Not there yet. Give him some time. Not there yet. And then Armas out. All of these are, are moves that you can see he wants to develop a system. He wants to develop a team to fit that system, and he wants a coach to put those pieces together. I think he's done a very good job so far, but this is going to be a season that's very, very difficult for us. I think this is going to be one of those 1999-2009 seasons. For those of you who don't know what that means, 1999 and 2009 were our two worst years of franchise history. And they basically, it was, it was like we started here, up, up, down. Up, 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 down. Up, 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 up. And then it dropped last year. It's going to be, I think it's going to be another one of those years. I think what you're going to see is a lot of players who are just kind of over this. You've got a shortened season where half of it was played in a tournament style that made zero sense. You're rotating players every four days because you're playing every four days and nobody gets consistent game time. You've got five subs, water breaks, like everything in there just doesn't feel normal. So I think a lot of guys have already kind of quit on it, which kind of sucks. But a lot of them were also really close, close to Chris Armas, and we talked about that, right? Like they all came up through the system. Armas has been there since – in the head coach role since 2017. I think he's been there – or 2018. He's been there since 2016, 2017. So most of the guys who are in that team right now came through the system with him. So watching him leave is like watching a, a, another player get cut or traded or whatever. It, it hurts a little bit. And a lot of them are going to have to rebound from that. And with the short season, I think we've got one game left in this phase before we move on to the next one, if there's a next one. But we're not moving in the right direction. I think a lot of them are ready to scrap it. But this is probably going to be one of the, the more, more poor seasons that we've seen to our new head coach. Is he the answer? I don't know. I don't think anybody knows after one game, but let's talk about what he did in game one. That probably could be better. Keep in mind, no Aaron Long, he was hurt. Uh, Tchaikovsky, hurt. Sean Davis, hurt. Who does that leave you to go in at center mid? You got Caceres. And then you're kind of filling spots, right? You've got you, you've got to fit a system that may or may not work. Florian Velo at center defensive mid is not your answer. That third goal, thir second or third goal, bless you. <laughs> the second or third goal, uh, I don't remember which one it was. Velo, it was like the 63rd minute or something. Velo was already gas because he was doing up and down, up and down, up and down all day. He was out of position. And because he was out of position, Caceres was running back and forth and back and forth trying to cover his ass. And they scored basically just breaking our team down. Not the right move. I'll, I'll let him off because after I looked at the report and the team that we had, didn't really have the numbers to play the way he wanted to play. So I'll let him off there. Where I can't let him off is taking Matthias Jorgensen off the bench for Tom Barlow and then putting on Brian White, who hasn't played in six games, instead of your new loanee, Samuel Tete, on the bench. Bro, we're down 3 nothing. We haven't won in, in anything. We haven't had a shot on goal in, like, three games. That's not a joke. That's a genuine stat. We have not had a shot on goal in at least the last game and the game before that. I don't know if we had one in the last one either. Our forwards are god-awful. You've tried all three of them already. 
why are we not taking the guy we don't know anything about and putting him on the field? Because we know Barlow can't do it. We know White can't do it. Or, well, when he did, he did, but he was offside. And we know that Jorgensen, man, that doesn't even touch the ball. He was on for 20 minutes. I don't think he touched the ball once. They aren't good enough. And you've got somebody on loan from a European side that has been known to be at least semi-decent over there. And you, you're just leaving him on the bench. I don't know if he's not fit enough. I don't know if he doesn't fit the system. How unfit can you be to not play 10 minutes in a game? I can play 10 minutes in MLS level. Not really. But anybody who comes over, I don't, I don't care how unfit you are. It's 10 minutes. Check in, lay the ball off, and peel off. You're a striker. It's not that hard. Uh, overall, he just couldn't get the team to play. And again, I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, Right, a lot of the guys were still kind of shaken up about the news about Armas leaving. I think a lot of the guys were trying to back him and fight for him until the last few games. But the guys who played, they were still fighting while half of them weren't. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm trying to make sense of something that maybe doesn't make sense. However, the, the, it's only one game. We'll give it some time. But the real question is, is he the answer? Thoughts? Um, I have a lot of thoughts. So, and let me get an answer to that question first. Okay. Um, ask me again after the DC game. And the reason I say that is because when, and I'll use Miami Orlando as an example. So, granted, Miami, I'll, I'll put them in similar positions. So, Miami's still getting used to, um, how their coach wants them to play. They're still getting used to the league. Um, and you can kind of tell that in the first couple games they were they were finding their feet. The Red Bulls are now in a similar situation. Granted, the, all those players are, for the most part, accustomed to the league. They've been playing, I don't know how many seasons together. But new coach, possibly new ideals because what they were doing clearly wasn't working. Um, and they have a few new pieces that you hope – come in and, and fight for starting spots. I mean, like you said, Pendant has been, I think, the the gold signing, the gold uh, standard this year as far as their signings. Um, Egbo has been okay from what I've seen. Um, not great, not poor. Um, but I haven't seen a whole lot of him, so you, you would know more than I would. Um, and then Jason Stroud's been okay. Hasn't done it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting. So bring it back. So Miami played Orlando uh, their first game and lost and said, okay, you know, still getting used to the league, whatever. The next time they played Orlando, you could see there were improvements. Whatever um, they noticed in that first match, they clearly worked on in practice. Yes, they had a couple new signings, but you could tell that there was a game plan in place for that second match at Orlando, and they won. Now that they play DC again, because we seem to play the same three teams in it's a like cycle. A, it's like a mini bubble all yeah, around the country. It, it's weird. But if there are no – if it looks the same as that last DC game, um, granted it wasn't under this new coach. It was still under Chris Armas. But if they l don't look at the DC game and, you know, change something, whether it works or not, I just want to see – that like they put the, some sort of effort into okay this is you know what we did last time clearly didn't work i want us to try this this and this and do something if you know if they lose again then you start to and it looks the same as that first dc game then you can start to say like uh, i don't know about this so i will i will give an update uh after they play on wednesday Thursday. in the way in the way that i have seen Kevin Thilwell worked so far. I can only imagine some no-name from some random league who has some ton of potential we've never heard of is about to come in and become a new Red Bull coach as of next year. Cool. I think he'll give Carnell the end of the year because his season doesn't matter anyway. Right. And by next year, he'll have somebody come in who fits his ideals. Because unless Carnell, to a T, breaks whatever mold that he has, and, and he's come out and said, I decided to fire Chris. But I don't want to change the way that we know how to play. So unless Carnell goes all in on the let's just press the hell out of him system, I don't think he's there by the yeah, end of the year. That's fair. And it's tough because 
Jesse Marsh right now is arguably the best American coach in the world. I mean, Red Bull makes the world takes. Well, you could argue Bob Bradley. You can argue maybe a few others, but I mean Jesse Marsh right now is is the guy for for this league, for our country. Yep. Um, and you could see, yes, Chris Armas was there when Jesse was a coach and could you know was with him in training every day, knew what they were working on, knew the system. But it's still a big drop off from now. You're, now he's the guy in charge and can implement his own his own ideals into the team. Um, so, so I get it, but we'll see. Um, as far as your point to Red Bull Global, and I'm going to say this, and I, I don't necessarily mean it the way it's going to come out, but MLS seasons don't matter for the most part. Okay. If, in terms of an ownership group. So if I'm an owner of an MLS team, as long as I don't do something like what RSL owners has done, and I, we won't get into that because that's a whole another two-hour episode. Um, you're you're in pretty good shape, you know. They're, you know, teams can't get relegated, so there's no huge financial loss that they could take. Best thing that happens is you win MLS Cup somehow, and you get a bonus. Um, take that and look at the other Red Bull properties. So Salzburg doesn't need a whole lot to win the league every year. Like, they can do the approach that they do with Red Bull uh, in New York with Salzburg, and it, it'll probably give you a league title nine out of ten years. Like, it, it's just the, the league they're in. Mm-hmm. But if they if that suddenly doesn't work, and let's say Re- Salzburg are – I only think there's, like, nine to ten teams in the league uh, in Austria. But let's say they finish mid-table or worse by some, you know, act of divine intervention. I bet you Rebel Global looks at that and goes, oh, crap, let's uh, fix what happened because if they get relegated, like, that's that's huge for them. So I think because we don't have that, like, massive financial penalty if Red Bull doesn't – like, worst kind of, like, if Red Bull, let's say, don't win a game for the rest of the season, as painful as that would be, you're still in the league next year. Like, Cincinnati won – three games last season and they're now looking like they're doing better. Like some of those players are still there. There's no real penalty for doing poorly. Can you, can you guess how much money the supporter shield is worth? How much prize money they get for winning a supporter shield? Like $12 on a handshake. Serious guess. Take a serious guess right now. um, How much Red Bull gets? No, no. How much of the winner of supporter shield gets? Yeah, so like how much Red Bull get, I'm saying. Well, or, well whoever wins Supporter Shield this, this year. Okay. They get a prize money with it. Like they get the shield and some money for the club. How much like money? Two hundred and fifty grand. Hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. That's now, what how I'm much making. it was in twenty fifteen when we won it in twenty fifteen for the second time? Seventy K. Fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. And and this that's is the what point, I mean. right? What is the re- now now I, I understand your point. What is the reason? to invest in a team where if your, your biggest loss, after you just sold, sold Erling Holland for millions of dollars, mm-hmm. your biggest loss is 150K. Yep. Bro, that's pocket change. Yeah, they don't care. That's not – I guarantee you they don't notice that money's not coming in. Never. Now, the issue is at what point do the fans start saying, Red Bull out, give us some players, let us play, and stop going to games, stop buying merchandise, stop doing um, this, stop doing that, right? Yeah, if we don't if we don't make playoffs this year, I think you're going to see a major shift in the way this the, these fans support. I know a lot of people are already starting to draw out their season tickets. A lot of people have already said, "I'm not going to buy a kit or a hat or anything Red Bull related until we get a badge or a star over the badge." Good luck, dude. You're gonna be, that's going to be a while for them. Well, that's what I mean, right? Um, and, and that's how they're going to start doing it. But yeah, I mean, it's just it's just weird. Um, like theoretically, and I know that MLS has obviously salary caps and and restrictions, so it's not like Red Bull can just come in and spend a billion dollars and bring us Messi and and whoever. I mean, technically, they could have. There's a way I, to do it. Yeah, I mean, New York City was gonna looking like they were gonna do that somehow, which would have been. So I would have. I would have hated. That. I genuinely watching Messi try to play at Yankee Stadium or at um. 
I don't even know where their stadium would have been. I would have said Red Bull Arena, but in yeah. three years, they probably won't still – hopefully still be there. Um, seeing him playing at Yankee Stadium, like, I – that hurts me thinking about that. Like, you can't well, put him – you can't make him play there. Like, that's no. just me. No. Well, that's what I that's what I said when we were talking about this um, this whole thing. Me and, me and some of my college teammates were talking about it ago. The biggest thing in that in that contract would be, are you – forced to come to United States after three years or is it an option because if I'm forced and you're telling me that in three years I might I have a chance of having to play soccer on a baseball stadium I'm saying NFW baby I'm not coming here if if it's a if it's an option I would say okay I mean he's not going anyway so this is irrelevant yeah but he'd be what 34 35 He'd come to the league six, I think. Something like that, yeah. He would he would come to the league making, you know, seventy billion dollars, whatever they want to give him. Um, whether that's on the books, off the books, I'm sure some shady stuff would happen. Um I don't think he wants a team, so it's not even like you can give him the Beckham deal where it's like Yeah, he doesn't want to he doesn't want to manage. He doesn't want he doesn't want that. He's he wants to retire in Argentina playing for his boyhood team where he can like yeah, where he can like walk home every day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like he doesn't, he, he doesn't care. Like, for like Cristiano, if the, if Cristiano Ronaldo came, I guarantee you he would get a franchise. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. R- Ronaldo is definitely the Beckham of, of the two. Yeah. But it, it's just interesting. Like you, there are pl- like most teams should be happy getting players from England. Like, that's a – if I said to someone, you know, you can somewhat get some minutes at a, a Leaf one team in England, or you can come in and fight for a starting place in New York, especially in New York, not even, like – I'm trying to think of, like, a random – Real Salt Lake. Yeah. Like Colorado. No, right. Like, no one in Utah uh, – no one in England knows where Colorado is. Right. Exactly. Um, like, realistically, people want to play in, like, New York, L.A., Miami – Right. That's pretty. Yeah. Much. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't disagree. I think to sum this all up, but it, this um, is going to be a really, really difficult season. But what I was going to say is that's a bend. Like it. It looks better than it actually is. So if you hear as a Red Bull fan, yeah, we brought in a guy, you know, who played for Brentwood. Uh, Brentwood. <laughs> mm, I'll let that part out. Brentford. <laughs> Someone who played for Brentford, who <laughs> were fighting for Premier League uh, promotion this season, only missed out by a game. You would think, you know, awesome, this guy's going to come in and, and score 20 goals. And, you know, he still might. He's only come on for a game. But then you actually watch him and he doesn't do anything. And you're like, okay, well, th- you know, we were promised or you made it sound like this big dude was coming in and that's not what we were given. And then I think you have the, the issues when people look more into it. Yeah. I, I just think this is going to be really tough. We're going to have to meddle through this season. This is going to be one of those seasons that we don't always get what we want. We just don't. And that's, that's the reality of football. It's reality of sport in general, right? You don't always get to be the, the child in the spotlight. That's just how it is. Meddle through this. Oh, excuse me. Meddle through it. Let Phil Well do his magic because he's proven he can do it. it. Take the hit now so we can have greatness in the future. That's all I'm going to say. 